You've heard of Ben and Jerry's? Well, get a load of Dave and Buster's. Actually, wait. I think that's taken already. Hey guys, I'm about to test by Kyle and today we're back once again taking a look at how to, how to make ice cream. How to model ice cream. Let's get started. I, I think this is one of the coolest things because we don't do a lot of modeling here on the channel. I'm just going to get rid of that and just, you know, get rid of all of it. I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to search for an icosphere. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here. I'm um, hit 1 on my numpad and hit Tab to go into edit mode. And I'm going to hit this little button up here at the top, which is the uh, X-ray button. So we can see through the entire sphere. So you can see we see the back side, we see the front side, we see everything. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and drag a box over top of all of maybe these vertices at the bottom here. And hit S, Z to scale them on the Z axis, make them a little bit more flat like that. Um, and I'm going to kind of curve them inwards slightly like that. Just a little bit like that. Hit G, Z to move them upwards about there, I suppose. And then we'll select this. Um, we'll turn X-ray off so it's a little easier to see. And we'll select this loop um, by holding Shift and Alt. So we can select the whole loop right there. And then hit S to scale this inwards like that. A little, little indent. And then we'll grab this one. Shift, Alt, left click. And then we'll just kind of scale this one out and up a little bit. Now what I want to do here is I kind of want to make little drips. Or like pieces that kind of drip off. So we'll select that. Maybe scale it out a little bit. And then we'll we'll select a few of these randomly, and we'll kind of just pull them downwards like this. Um, and I kind of you can you can use G Z to move them straight down. You can hit G just to move them down in a random fashion like that. Have them be a little angled and whatnot. Um, move some of them up, some of them down. Um, yeah, just trying to trying to get some random variation in here. Something like this. Maybe have a really long one right there, like that perhaps. Move that up, uh, oh, move that down easily. Nice. Okay, so once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and hit tab to go back out of edit mode. And we're going to uh, go to the modifiers tab, hit add modifier and subdivision surface. Now you can see this is looking a little bit better now, but we, what we need to do is we need to add some more. Um, we need to add some more loop cuts here. So let's go ahead and try and reach in there and hold down shift and alt to try and uh, grab that edge loop. Um, you can see on the inside there, you can try and grab that edge loop, right, this one right here. You can turn this little uh, monitor icon on and off to see this a little easier. And hit shift, or sorry, hit control B, and then scroll your mouse wheel up once to make like three little lines like this. And then we'll just kind of create a nice little bevel there. So you can see it looks a little bit better once we turn that uh, subdivision service back on. It looks a little bit more um, uh, uh, edge-like, I guess. I don't know how to describe that. But yeah, we can maybe pull this up or pull it down either way. I'm going to pull it up i like the way it looks when it goes up like that um and then with this edge loop it's, we're going to kind of try and finagle this a little bit and make it uh a little bit more how i uh want it to be let's go ahead and grab all these loops and kind of like you know pull them up like that and then we'll kind of up here at the top we'll turn x-ray mode back on grab all three of these move them down a little bit you know kind of squash it down a little bit and then grab the top point and try and Make sure that's a little bit more rounded off like that. There you go. So that's pretty much it. It kind of looks like a dumpling as well, but maybe it's a little too squatty now. Let's kind of maybe squish everything upwards. Oh, make sure. There you go. Always check. Make sure x-ray is on so you don't do that. So you don't only grab one side of it. There you go. I was like, that doesn't look right. All right. Pull all that up. I'm trying to give it a little bit more body down here at the uh, at the bottom. There you go. Okay, it looks pretty good. I like that. Nice. Cool, 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 cool. Um, now with this, it's not, it doesn't go out far enough, this bottom piece. So let's go ahead and grab all these um, vertices down here in x-ray mode. Hit S to scale them up. And then maybe move them down a little bit like that. And then we'll grab, I think we'll grab these uh, loop cuts in the center as well and kind of make them, they're a little too skinny. We'll kind of pull them back out a little bit. There we go. Maybe pull that in. Pull that in a little bit. There we go. Easy, 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 easy. Okay. So, that looks pretty good if I do say so myself. Let's go ahead and go to object mode and turn shade smooth on. Oh, so make sure that's selected. And then make sure shade smooth. There we go. Nice. Cool. So, once that's done, I think this is a little too round up at the top here. Oop. Make sure x-rays are on. There we go. A little better. Nice. Cool. So, next thing I want to do is, because this is too smooth and looks a little strange, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and add a modifier of a displace 
and then go to the texture tab here and what we all will do is we'll hit this little new button and we'll change this from image or movie to da, 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 clouds. Now you can see this looks a little crazy. So let's go back to the modifiers tab and turn the strength all the way down to about 0.1. And we're going to probably turn it down even more than that. Let's go ahead and put this on point, 0.5, 0 0.05. 0 0.05 looks pretty decent. We can maybe do a little bit more. 0 0.07 looks pretty good as well, I think. I think this is looking a little too long down here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and see if I can't maybe SZ to scale this upwards and make it a little, little, little thinner. There we go. I like that. It looks pretty good. Um, maybe it's a little not long enough now, actually, honestly. It's just a bunch of trial and error, you know? So let's go ahead and maybe like that. Okay, yeah, I like that. It looks, that, looks, that looks nice. I like that quite a bit. Okay, cool. So you can see this look, looks a lot different than this, like, super smooth and then a little rough. So that looks a lot better, obviously, a little bit more like ice cream as well. So there we have it. Nice, 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 nice. Now, the next thing I want to do is we could do a little bit. Actually, maybe we can get a little bit with a little bit more roughness. We can maybe actually get away with 0.1. Yeah, let's do 0.1. What's 0.2 look like? Yeah, it's maybe a little too much, maybe for pistachio ice cream or something, but not for this. I might turn the viewport, the the um, subdivisions up to two, and then turn down the noise to maybe 0.7. Maybe. I think it's, they need to be a little bigger as well. So let's turn the size up on the uh, texture and the texture tab here. So we'll do 0.4, maybe 0.5. 0.5 looks pretty decent. Maybe 0.6, actually. Ah, no. We'll go down a little bit. 0.4. Let's do 0.4. All right, cool. So with that done, uh, I don't want to play around with that too much. Let's go ahead and oop, let's go ahead and grab this bad boy. Hit Shift D to duplicate it. And the cool thing is we can just stack these bad boys right on top of each other and hit hot hit r z to kind of rotate them around and now you see if you have any clipping you can try and go ahead and try and uh grab these pieces here and kind of just pull them outwards like that grab this piece kind of pull it outwards a little bit you know something something like that this one down here as well kind of pull it out and then finally this one hit g to pull it out just g on the keyboard works magic this little piece as well this little piece. And if you have a hard time seeing, you can always turn wireframe mode on. There we go. And grab these a little bit easier. And then go back to solid so you can pull them out. Super, super easy stuff. Super easy. Nice. Cool. So we can pull that out about there. And it looks like it's kind of just like sitting on top of the other ice cream uh, cone. Now, we can go ahead and hit Shift D, duplicate that once again, and move it up. And then this time, we'll just hit uh, RZ to rotate them. Make it so it's not the same exact thing. And there we go. And we can actually honestly get rid of the first one. Hit Shift D, duplicate it, pull it down so that they all kind of sit properly on top of one another like that. Which looks pretty darn cool if I do say so myself. So we have three little ice cream cones. It's three little ice cream pieces, sorry rather. Um, and now we need to go ahead and make the cones. So let's go ahead and hit uh, GZ to move this up. And for the cone, there's a couple ways we can do this. We can do this uh, super easy. We can do it a little, a little, a little more different. So let's go ahead and um, add a cone, obviously. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and actually, what we're gonna do? You know what we're gonna do? We are going to make a uh, cylinder cone. Um, I'm gonna hit Tab to go into edit mode here, and we're gonna add in some loop cuts. So add the loop cut tool. Boom. Put one there. Kind of move it up to almost the top. Um, uh, not that far about, about there. Yeah, sure. Um, and then hit another loop cut, put it, uh, pretty close to it about there. And then we're going to create one more. And then this one is going to be probably down at the bottom there. Nice. Okay. So with this done, hit one on the, uh, numpad to go into the front facing view and turn x-ray back on, go to the select tool and then grab all of these vertices except for the uh, first loop cut we created and then hit S to kind of scale them inwards like that and then kind of move it up like that. There you go. S G Z to move it up and stuff like that. There we go. 
And then we're gonna go ahead and grab this bottom piece that we created and hit S to scale this one in a little bit, just a tiny bit like that. Nice, cool. And then I'm gonna just grab these and then you know, move it down because it's a little too, um, it's a little too um, short. There we go. Nice. Okay, so next thing I wanna do, I, I wanna go ahead and um, hollow this out or not hollow it out, sorry, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, if we pull these down like this, you can see that the ice cream, it's, oh, the cone is a little bit too big, so let's go ahead and hit S to scale it down, kind of shove it up in there like that. Um, that looks pretty good. I think it's a little too small. There we go. Nice. So that looks pretty good. Now the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab the cone here, go to uh, the object uh, data tab here, go to normals, hit auto smooth, and then go up to object, and turn shade smooth on and then we can go ahead and um turn that back on i don't know why it unchecks it but yeah make sure that's on and there we have it it looks nice and uh sturdy i'm gonna grab this piece down here and hit up oh, this piece down here and hit s scale it in a little, a little in a little words a little a little words like that now for all these edges because uh the cone looks like it's plastic right now because it has no like edges or whatever else i'm gonna go ahead and hit shift uh, sorry uh shift alt and select this edge loop and hit uh, Control B. Yeah, right, Control B. Yeah, Control B to add the bevel here, um, and then we'll just add a nice little edge there, so it's not as harsh. Same thing for this up here. Control B. There you go, and the same thing down here. Grab this edge loop. Control B. And then we'll do the same thing for this last one, which is going to be a little weird, but. There we have it. Nice. It looks good. So now it looks a little bit more rounded, a little bit more natural. Um, now, because it's still kind of looks like plastic, uh, let's go ahead and go to the modifiers tab and do the same thing that we did with the other one, which is going to be adding a displacement, hitting new, going to texture, hitting open. Oh, not open. <laughs> My mistake. Um, hitting uh, new. Um, actually, not hitting new. I'm all over the place. Hitting this t type um, image or movie and changing it to clouds. And then we need to go ahead and change the strength to point one. But you can see here we have an issue because there's no vertices here. So let's go ahead and create some. Let's add some loop cuts. Boom, 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 boom. You could have also scrolled the mouse wheel up to do that. But listen, we don't like doing that here, okay? So we're going to add one probably there and there as well. Just to create a little bit of variation. Nice. Uh, cool. So I'm going to turn this strength down to point zero five. Just so it's a little bit of maybe even less than that 0 0.02. Just so it's a little bit not perfect. Like you can see a little bit of the wavering in there. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe 0 0.05 is fine. Yeah, 0 0.05 is fine. Just a little bit of waver in there. So it doesn't look like super smooth, you know. Um, I'm going to select these three. Um, loop cuts here. And kind of scale them out a little bit. Make it a little softer. There we go. Nice. Um, and maybe these, these three as well. These three is, these three is, these three is, okay, nice. I can love this. You see, <laughs> I gotta get to, okay. So you, you see how the loop cuts doing this weird thing where it's selecting the one vertically and not the one that I wanted to, I gotta get the right angle and then it'll do it right. There you go. Um, scale that up a little bit. Maybe grab this one, scale it inwards. Oh, yeah. Okay. There we go. That looks a lot better. I like that quite a bit more. And then I'll do the same thing with this up here. I'll kind of like, yeah, sure. That looks kind of cool. I like the, like the hard line like that. That's pretty sweet actually. Okay. Yeah, there we go. That's what, that's what I wanted. Nice. Um, now for the rest of this, I do kind of want to make a little texture. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the, this first ice cream cone, hit H to hide that. Cause we don't want to see that right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, select, oops, select all of these here hit i to inset and then hit e to extrude and hit s to scale it inwards like that and then i'm going to kind of like scale it down a little bit so s z there we go create a nice little little edge there and then because no edge is completely sharp we're going to select both of these by holding down shift and alt and hitting control b to bevel those edges a little bit and the same thing with the ones on the inside right here as well control b to bevel these a little bit there we go nice so that was pretty cool i like it um now with uh that done i think i wanted the same thing here as well so let's go ahead and select all of these faces by hitting one on my numpad 
going to x-ray mode and then just clicking and dragging a box over top of all these squares hitting i to inset hitting e to extrude and s to scale in all right actually well, you can just hit e to extrude honestly and then s and then s z to kind of scale it inwards like that and there you have it nice cool so i want to go ahead and also bevel this edge up here grab that edge shift control shift control control b to bevel the, the edge there and then now we have something that looks pretty darn cool and the inside ones as well don't forget about those and, and there you go nice cool so um, I might be able to go ahead and actually put on a subdivision surface modifier on this as well. Um, and let's try and move that up above. Or actually, yeah, up above. All right, cool. And then maybe put that to two. No, not two. Leave it on one. <laughs> Definitely leave that on one. Um, all right, cool. Nice. So with that completed, now we could add some... Um, I'm going to put some more height on this, actually. Let's go ahead and grab the face select and kind of hit E. Sorry, Z, uh, GZ to move this upwards. And maybe actually maybe we'll hit E to extrude it. Maybe. And then hit I to inset. E to extrude downwards. S to scale it inwards. Just so it has a little little cave in there. Just a little indent there. It doesn't have to go all the way in, but I just want to make a little bit of an indication that it uh, that it goes down there. Maybe I'll create a little loop cut on that and then hit uh G Z to raise it up. So it's a little bit more rounded. Oh yeah, maybe like that. That's pretty cool. Nice. You don't even really see that piece, but you know, just in case. Um, all right. Now you could go ahead and add like little wrappers, like pieces of paper around the uh, the part where you hold this, which is kind of common in a lot of um, waffle or not waffle cones, uh, ice cream cones. But um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm I'm gonna go ahead and we're just gonna do some very basic materials for this. So hit Alt H to unhide the ice cream that we previously hidden it. it, it, it. I'm gonna pull this inwards a little bit so lightly there we go and then this one as well so it kind of form fits around the cone so it's dripping down i guess nice cool this one as well nice all right so with that done I am going to create the ice cream cone textures. Let's go to the rendered viewport shading real quick. So this little button up at the top here, rendered, so we can see what it looks like properly. Hit Shift A, and I'm going to add in a area lamp. Hit G Z to move it upwards. S to scale it. G uh, X to move it over, and R Y to rotate like that. R Y on the keyboard, or just double tap R, and you can freely rotate it. Turn the power up a little bit like that. And then I'm going to hit Shift D, duplicate this, move it over, and just R, Z to kind of rotate it. This is just you know, super basic lighting stuff. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but let's go ahead and just make it a little brighter. There we go. Um, and now what I, want to do, what I want to do is I want to kind of do all these very similar, and then we'll just change the color. So um, we will, uh, we're going to do super basic because this is like ice cream modeling. It's not necessarily the materials for today, but let's go ahead and, uh, and do a super basic material for this bad boy let's go ahead and turn off overlays real quick and i'll turn out the base color like a nice pink for the first one um and then what, we're gonna, what i'm gonna do is turn specular up um turn the roughness down uh a wee bit and we're gonna go ahead and da, 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 actually I'm turn the, the roughness down a lot like that because that I mean that looks like ice cream to me um but uh what we need to do is i need i need like i need like a, a nice in between I want it to look kind of dry. Yeah, there you go. I want it to look kind of dry, but also very ice creamy. You know what I mean? Um, the clear coat and this kind of stuff, you can turn the clear coat and the sheen all the way up. So we have that nice, so you have that nice, like, brighter edge to all of the lights there and the sheen as well. Sheen won't do, oops, sheen won't do too much because we don't have too much uh, color. Where's the specular tint? There we go. Specular tint will make this a little pinkish as well, which I think will look a little bit better, honestly. Um, that looks good. There probably should be a little bit of subsurf in this as well because ice cream is not super solid, obviously. But it kind of makes it look like it's uh, like gelatin if you do a little bit too much. So let's go ahead and turn the subsurface up slightly, and then we'll use subsurf color as the pink, and we'll actually we'll lighten it a little bit. There we go. 
that's good. That's fine. Um, just something super, uh, super basic. Uh, I'm going for a more stylized kind of look here. So let's go ahead and add all the materials to all three of these, and then we'll switch the colors. So actually, maybe I do. Oh, do I want them all to be pink? I don't know if I do. I don't think that I do. Let's go ahead and hit this little button right here, this little four, and change this to a new material. We'll call this one green. Grebe? No, we'll leave it grebe. We'll leave it grebe, but lowercase. Um, and we'll make it like a sea foamy kind of mint, maybe. And then we'll add that there. Drop the opacity down. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Um, I think for the... Yeah, there we go. Okay, we'll change the values down here a little bit to match the bluish tint that I want a little bit more than the reddish tint because it is like supposed to be mint. And then do we do a third color? Or do we leave the other one pink, like alternate like that? I don't know. We'll try it. Hit this little button here and we'll call this one yellow. This would be like banana or something. I don't know. Nice banana ice cream. Actually, I actually really want banana ice cream. That sounds really good. That sounds crazy good. All right, nice. I think I want to switch these though. Because that yellow looks too close to the color that I want to make the um, that I want to make the uh, cone. So let's make that one green. I'm gonna make this one yellow. Yeah, that works nice. Cool. So with the cone, I want to go ahead and hit new, and we'll do this a little differently. We'll have the base color be like a orangey tan kind of cone color. There you go. Um, and then for the specular, what's with the specular all the way down? And the roughness, that doesn't really matter when there's not that much specular. Let's go ahead and just turn it all the way up. Why not? Um, and then there was something else that I wanted to do for this bad boy. And I can't recall. Oh, I wanted to do I want to do very slightly different colors for this. So let's go ahead and open up the shader editor by putting my cursor in the top left. And kind of just splitting and dragging it into two. And then changing this to the shader editor. Boom. Um, nice. And what I'll do here is we'll hit search and add a color ramp nice color hook that up to the da, 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 hook that up to the base color and then we'll actually let's grab that tan color first so let's select this color hex uh click and drag a highlight over that control c to copy that and then we can plug that back in and then change this black color to um a uh th th that color so hit control v and then enter to kind of paste that in um, and then we'll paste the same color in the white. But this time we'll darken it a little bit and add a little bit more reddish tones. So now you can see it's very, very faint. If I were to go ahead and like, you know, change to constant, you can see a better description of the color changing. And maybe if I darken it, if I darken it a little bit. Um, what we need to do first, we need to add, the, I'm dumb. We need to add the noise texture first. So hit shift A, uh, uh, hit noise. Um, and then plug the color up into that. There you go. So now you can see the difference that that is. Um, so that's, yeah, that's way too dark. Let me put that back. And then we'll hit noise. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. And we'll put the noise back. Nice. Okay. So you can see here, that's the color difference. It, they're very similar colors, but I do want some nice color variation. I'm going to go ahead and put this back on linear. So it's, you know, not like super hard like that. And then it's just a slight color variation that I'm looking at there. That looks pretty dang cool. Um, nice. And I think we might be able to get away with doing the same thing here in the, um, in the ice creams as well, the ice cream flavors, but I will refrain from doing that for now. I think I want to make this middle ice cream bigger. So hit S to scale it up and then maybe I'll move it down a little bit and then we'll move that one up. Oh, that's cute. It's like a different size. That's adorable. And maybe, maybe just maybe I want to kind of rotate this. So I think a cool thing to do it would be hit tab and then double tap A until everything's orange and then put this, the, the, the point, the origin at the bottom there. So you see that little, that orange dot. And then when we go ahead and move that back down and we hit R to rotate this, double tap R to rotate this. I think I kind of want to get a nice little angle or I'll do like this instead, actually get a nice little angle for this guy to kind of like hang off the side, maybe like that. That looks kind of cool. I like that. Nice. And then we'll do the same thing with both of these. So we'll kind of rotate that this way. And then move it like that. And then maybe we'll move it this direction as well. Um, that's cool. I like that. That's very nice. That's pretty sweet. So it's kind of like leaning now a little bit, which is uh, pretty, 
Pretty wicked. I like that a little bit. It looks pretty nice. It looks pretty cool. Um, I think it, uh, it, uh, it looks pretty cool. Now, what I do want to do is I kind of want to light this from this side as well. Like I said, this is just super basic materials. We're not, I'm not going to spend too much time on the materials because I just wanted to kind of model something today and not worry about having to do this. It kind of looks like frozen yogurt or like sherbet or something um, as well. But what I do want to do is let's go ahead. Up, let's just go ahead and see if we can get. Um, now, this is going to be super stylized here. I want to add a little bit of a mission to this. So let's go ahead and open the shader editor up again and we'll hit shift A and we'll search for an emission shader and we'll kind of mix it with the principal BSDF. Um, I think we, if we were to do this with this, it would just, it would kind of like overlay it in a way I don't want. So let's go ahead and do it separately. Um, and we'll do like this. And I do want to be able to control the, sh the strength of it and the color of it separately. So let's go ahead and add maybe like some pinkish colors like this and turn the strength up a little bit. It looks a lot softer. Look at the, look at the difference. It looks a lot softer. I think I like that look quite a bit. It does look like it looks kind of gelatinous, which I think looks pretty cool. I like that a lot. It looks like hard pudding. I don't know. Um, but we'll do, the same. <laughs> we'll do the same thing. I'm going to grab these. I'm going to put this on an even six strength. Hit control, uh, drag a box up top piece, hit control C. We'll go to this one. Control, control. Oh, we can't paste. I forgot. We can't do that. There's actually, a, there is a way to paste, um, nodes, but it is not like that. Um, I honestly don't recall. There is some, it was, I do believe it was something up here though. Hmm. I have to, um, I have to look at that and remind myself what that is. Oh, there we go. We can't control C, control V at nice. Okay, cool. All right. Um, I'm going to hook this up here, put that there, put that there, and then we'll change this color from that color to, that looks, that looks really, wait, what are these flavors? That looks wicked. I like that a lot. Um, or just something like that. It looks like, like honey banana or something. That's, that's a nice, that's a cool looking color. Holy. All right. And then last, and then last but not least, it just gets rid of the dark shadows that I don't like really too much. You see, it gets rid of those, it gets, it, it kind of highlights it nice in the back there. See, it looks, it looks nice and, and creamy instead of this one looking like super dark back here, even without the lighting. Um, let's go ahead and do this one. Control V. And then we'll kind of just put this there. Boom, 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 pow. Nice. And then this bad boy, we'll give him a nice green and minty greenish. There we go. That looks nice. That looks really cool. But yeah, that is going to be probably it for today. I do want to go ahead and grab all of these. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to hold down control. Oh, sorry. Hold on shift and select all the ice creams. Then the cone hit control P to set parent to object. And then when we move the cone, the ice cream moves with it. And when we rotate it, it rotates with it as well. Uh, and then you go ahead and you can just put a little background behind this, something, nothing too crazy, just something like this, boom, 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 and something like this, and 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 like that, and, um, yeah, and then we have a nice little, that's the wrong way, okay, nice, <laughs> I'll just, I'll just hit, uh, three, or not three, there we go, we'll do this. And put a little quick little camera in. There we go. Alt R to clear rotation. There we go. And then rotate it like this. This is just a super, super quick camera setup. Super quick camera setup. Nice. Cool. Pretty. And then we'll change this to like 2000 by 2000 to make it a square. And then we'll rotate the cone up a little bit like that. That is essentially how to make a nice little ice cream cone, buddy, in um, <laughs> in uh, in Blender. So I hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed today's tutorial. I want to get like a cool dynamic camera frame. I, we usually always end the tutorial off here, but I do really kind of want to get a nice little, nice little angle, nice little shot to complete this scene. Let's go ahead and lock the camera to view here and we'll kind of just move it around. Maybe we'll do like, eh, maybe we'll do like, like, like an upshot. No, we won't do an upshot. <laughs>
Let's do that. I kind of wanted to get a nice like depth of field thing going on, so that's why I wanted to do that. But and then we'll, we'll zoom in and we'll pan back, and then we'll zoom in again. Nice. And then depth of fields, and then uh, da, 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 da. where's limits? Limits. And then we'll undo that. And then I'll kind of try and turn this. I'll turn the size up a little bit, and then we'll move the focus distance about to the green, to the minty green, and then we'll turn the f-stop down a little bit. That's a nice little little tiny bit of depth of field. That's a nice little tiny bit of depth of field. There you go. Cool. Um, and what is it like if I turn color management to standard? Oh, oh holy. All right. The one time I don't want to do that. <laughs> Look background. Ooh, a little purplish like that. That looks pretty cool. I like that. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, nice. With the with the lamps, there is not enough brightness going on here. I want to make this one a little yellowish. There we go. What's this one? That one's kind of like a rim light. We'll make that one super bright. And then what is this one? This one's kind of like another rim light, but from the other side. Nice. Okay, and I'll make this one slightly bluish to kind of match the background. Look at that blue purplish kind of thing. And then maybe we'll make this one like a, a harsh color. Like like that. That's pretty nice. I like that. That's pretty cool. Um I do think that I wanna do something here with um maybe some contact shadows. Maybe. I don't think this is going to necessarily... It kind of gives a nice little edge there. That looks pretty nice, I guess, I suppose. Um, I don't think we really need shadows on all of these, especially the rim lights. So we're going to go ahead and maybe... Eh. I think they're maybe necessary. It looks kind of weird there if, if I don't have those on. That's fine. We'll leave them. And then we will go ahead and turn on ambient inclusion. Turn the distance up to about like 10 um, just to get a nice little edge for anything that's touching that doesn't have them it's but it's probably in this case a really super small difference we'll turn bloom on um and then we will go ahead and turn the intensity up and the threshold up and the intensity up and the radius up <laughs> uh, maybe the threshold a little bit too much there we go nice sometimes i wish you could turn the intensity up a bit more but you have that nice little bloom on the edge of there and i want to make this pink color that we have slightly more pink because it's not pink enough for me There we go. That looks like raspberry now or something. Strawberry looks really good. Um, cool. Very nice. I think I want to turn. Ooh, yeah, wait. Maybe a darker background like that. That looks pretty nice. I think that looks pretty cool. That's pretty swell. All right. Nice. With that done, I think that ends off the tutorial in a nice little area. I hope you, ladies and gentlemen, enjoyed it. I do think I want to make a really quick... point lamp down at the bottom there to give some light to that edge of the cone maybe slightly yellow slightly when i say slightly i mean slightly like that maybe something like that let's put that's kind of cool yeah 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 i like that uh, that gives a nice little tone to it and maybe something on the sides of the cone as well because it is a little dark around here something there and maybe something there yeah that's cool not too close though nothing too crazy I like that. I like that quite a bit. Nice. Um, that works very well. Okay. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Just a simple, cutesy little semi-low poly ice cream cone. I think that's what I'm gonna. Um, that's what I'm gonna refer to this as. It is quite, quite low poly. There's not too many things going on here. It's a very stylized ice cream cone. I think that looks pretty, pretty nice. I'll see you, ladies and gentlemen, in the next one. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, bye bye.